Hello, welcome to the Hawthorne Cottage Craft Podcast. This is Coffee with Kate. It's number five and today we're talking about sweaters. I'm Kate. You can find me on Instagram as Kate underscore Hawthorne Cottage Craft, on Ravelry as a runner bean, and we have a Ravelry group for the podcast called Hawthorne Cottage Craft Podcast. I also have a Kofi account where you can support the podcast if you so wish and thank you to everyone who has already done so and the links to all those places are in the description box below. Hello, as I said today we're talking about sweaters. I hope you have your coffee with you. Today I'm using a very appropriate mug as we're talking about sweaters. This is my sweater weather mug by Remembrances Pottery and I have my coffee in there because as you can see and I'll try and turn it a little bit. I'm sitting beside quite a large stack of sweaters. A few people have asked me to talk about sweaters that I've knit in the past and how they have worn with the yarn that I have used and if I would recommend that yarn. So today I thought that I would look over the, the 10 years or so of sweater knitting. This is 10 years worth. This isn't just all done in the last few years. Um, I got back into knitting about 10 years ago and I knit one object which I'm going to show you and then there might have been a little bit of a lull and then I got back into it really really seriously. For anyone who has watched the podcast uh, throughout will know that although I dabble in other things like shawls and I knit socks on a regular basis sweater knitting is really where my heart lies which is evident i worked out that i do have a hand knit sweater or a cardigan for every day of the month and a couple spare but as i told my husband it has meant that i haven't bought any other sweaters um over that time i think apart from a couple of sweatshirt hoodies that are touristy but all my sweaters are now hand knit. So I'm really, really pleased with that. So I thought I would tell you about my top 10 maybe sweaters. What I hope to do is at the end, if you wish to, to watch on, at the very end, I'll do a gallery of all the sweaters, take a photograph of them, let you see them and the name of the, the sweater so that if you want to go and have a look, Underneath in the description box, I will have put a link to each of the sweaters. Um, I will link my pattern page if there is one um, on Ravelry, if you use Ravelry um, to see what I have done. I'm hoping and my, my plan is over the next month is to try and get my Ravelry page completely up to date. I'm going to work through these and put all the details on so that you can look. But if I don't have the Ravelry link to my pattern page. There will be a, a project page. There will be a link to the pattern page from the designer. If you don't use Ravelry, and I know a number of people aren't using Ravelry at the moment. If you don't use Ravelry, I would recommend that you check out um, Instagram to see if the designer is there or if they have a website and maybe contact them that way to find out how you can get the patterns if they're still available. As I said, I will link all the Ravelry pages there. Anyway, to the sweater knitting. I'll take a little drink. There's a range of sweaters here. I There's a range of quality in how I've knit them because I say, as I said, this is the range from the past 10 years. But the very first sweater that I knit um, way back, I think it was about 2011, that I had decided I wanted to me just get into sweater knitting and I thought I would have to start simple and I started with a vest. This vest, and I have all my details here so I will have to look down occasionally, this vest was my very first one. And I absolutely adore this. I still wear this. I wore this a lot to work um, when I was still teaching. It was a great cover piece. This was a Patton's 
um, pattern. At the very beginning, particularly when I wasn't sure if I wanted to really get back into knitting, I didn't want anything too expensive. I didn't know about fancy yarns or fancier yarns. And I bought the pattern for this in the homeware store Dunelm um, here in the UK. They do a lot of homeware. They do upholstery, fabrics and a small craft section and they would have some yarns and this is what I had bought the patterns pattern for the vest there was a number of patterns in the booklet and it's also patterns yarn so it's a mix of uh, wool and acrylic it's a wool blend um, iron weight vest and I had fun knitting this the because it was my first time really uh, knitting any garment I had difficulty with this I couldn't understand how to construct and, and work the, the neckline and we were in Scotland on holiday at the time and a local yarn shop there I brought it to them and they showed me how to to work this and that's actually where I bought the the brooch that I pinned onto it I stayed there since so this was my very very first it has worn so well I suppose it because it's a wool acrylic blend it has worn well it has there's been no pulling whatsoever in this and it's just it looks exactly the same as it did when it came off the needles so that was a patterns uh, vest and it was my first garment and it's it's a great layering piece over it's lovely over a white shirt um, and I was thrilled with that and it really gave me the bug for sweater knitting as I said the links are below um, for all these patterns I think it is still available. That was, as I said, kind of the start of my sweater knitting. And then there was a lull. And I started to get back into it seriously, I probably around 2015. And that was when I started and discovered hand dyed yarn. And I think one of the first sweaters that I knit with hand dyed yarn and um, it was with Fine Fish Yarns because uh, she is my local dyer or not, she's not dying anymore unfortunately at the moment anyway. Um, but this was Fine Fish Yarns and I had wanted again something simple. And I had found a pattern uh, called Claude. No, the, the pattern was the Berkeley sweater. The colourway is Claude. And it was this. And it was just a simple stocking stitch with a little bit of um, seed stitch, I think, at the side. And down the side it's very very similar in design i think to the flax sweater by tin can knits this is the berkeley sweater by uh, naomi odin and it's a free pattern on ravelry i didn't maybe it was just because i was quite a new sweater knitter and maybe if i look back on it now the pattern would make more sense but i found it quite a difficult pattern to follow i had a lot of trouble with the sleeves um, but I got there in the end and I kind of fudged a lot of it. It is knit in superwash merino and this is something I have discovered over my sweater knitting lifetime. I prefer woolly wools for sweater knitting. I do love this yarn and I would love it in other projects but it's superwash and the problem with superwash, particularly merino, is that it stretches when you block it uh, or soak it. This sweater, when I initially knit it, I didn't soak it initially and or block it. And then Terry actually took it away with her for a sample for shows when she was doing shows. And when she brought it back, she said, you might need to give it a wash. It's been it's been through the shows. I put this into soak and when I took it out this reached my knees I had a dress and I was devastated I had to put it in the tumble dryer 
which is a very scary experience to try and shrink it back up again and it did it worked but it was something I wouldn't particularly enjoy having to do every time so superwash is something that I have steered away from in sweater knitting I have a few other pieces that are superwash this again sweaters are fine fish this was the is this the pavement sweater by Vera Valamaki. I think this one's the pavement. Which is a great beginner's um, pattern. And it stretched a little bit. Not as much because maybe I, I was so aware of it. I didn't let it soak for very long. And I certainly um, made sure when I was putting it out that it didn't get the opportunity to stretch out. But I love this and this is one of my Christmas sweaters because it's sparkly, which I'm not sure you can see there. But that's the Pavement Sweater by Vera Valamaki. It was super wash. Uh, this did not stretch out, which I was delighted about. And this would be one of my favourite pieces. Again, it's fine fish yarns. It's fade. It's the Utu uh, cardigan, which was out of Lina number two, I think. And it's by Anna Johanna. And this gets a lot of wear as a summer cardigan. So this would be one of my top cardigan knits. I've really, really enjoyed this. It was a beautiful pattern to knit. Very simple. There's just a little bit of detail around the neckline. And then it's just stocking stitch. The detail again is reflected here in the cuff. Just above the cuff. And it was a beautiful knit. And I love this cardigan. And it does get a lot of wear. And it hasn't uh, stretched out. But I think it is a risk you take with um, superwash yarn. The other superwash is this one. It's the Edie t-shirt. This is by Moon and Sixpence. The colourway. The yarn. And it has stretched out a little bit. But not too much. And it's a lovely summer t-shirt it's the ed um t-shirt by isabel kramer and i've knit two of these so it was quite a popular pattern here because it's just such a nice light summer top but super wash is something i do tend to steer away from when i'm knitting garments just because i don't want them to stretch out and lose shape after all the work i've put into them the rest of my sweaters are woolly wools. Um, I love the feel of them. I love the smell of wool. It's a really tactile. All the senses are engaged for me when I am knitting. So I'm going to just pick out the top ones. My favourite sweater I think of all time was another early knit. And it, it is just worn so, so much. This is the Riding to Avalon hoodie by Connie Chang Chinchio. And it was part of the Knit Scene, the Best of Knit Scene book. So it had been in a Knit Scene magazine at one point. And I love this. This was a challenge for me because it had a hood, which I had never worked in before it had this kind of placket at the front but I love this and it gets so much wear I love the detail of the cuff the stitch pattern and I knit this with Rowan felted tweed which is a DK yarn and it has worn so so well I wear this at least once a week maybe more and it, I don't think it has ever pilled. And if it has, it's it's really not noticeable. So I would really recommend Rowan Felted Tweed. It's a beautiful, beautiful yarn to work with. It is a mix of merino, alpaca and rayon. And you can really feel the softness of the alpaca. And it's not itchy wool at all. I know some people are sensitive to alpaca. This is not an itchy yarn and it has worn well. This was knit in 20, 
16, I think. And it still looks as good as new. So that would be my, I think, my favourite sweater ever. And the most worn. My second favourite is a cardigan. And this cardigan... It, it's funny because when I started to knit it, it was reverse stockinette. Which sounds so complicated. But particularly in a cardigan, it's just stocking stitch. You just tend to look at the wrong side rather than the right side. But it is just stocking stitch. But it gave me a mental block for a long time. And I almost... Um, didn't finish knitting it but I am so glad I did because it really is one of my favourites. It is the Scully Cardigan by Carrie Westerman and it has lace work up around the top and then as I said it's just reverse stocking stitch. There's a little bit of detail of the lace at the bottom and on the cuffs and again this would be an extremely well worn uh, cardigan I knit this in blacker blacker yarns I think would be one of my top yarns I find their yarn is hard wearing but it's soft for me and I just I just love the colors and the look and the feel of it this was their West Country Tweed DK and it was a natural grey colour. And I love it. And what I did, because again, if you know me, I don't really like knitting button bands or putting buttonholes in. So what I did was a an idea I took from another cardigan. I put in some ribbon and some presser studs. And then put on the fancy buttons to the front. And these were from the textile garden. So this was a really hard wearing yarn. And um, I love this. I knit this. I think it was 2018. I knitted to go to um, Edinburgh Yarn Festival in 2018. I think I maybe bought the yarn the previous year. So it's the Scully Cardigan by Carrie Westerman. Then another, I think, it's funny enough, a couple of my favourite knits are cardigans. This was another one that had a long <laughs> embittered history, but has become a favourite. And it's the Kate Cardigan. And again, if you've been watching the podcast for a while, you know there's been a saga with this. It's a pattern by Libby Johnson and it was in line of four. And again, it's knit in blacker yarns. This time it is their Jacob, their um, breed specific yarn. It's Jacob four ply. And the colorway for this was pale green marlstone. Their yarns just, they don't show wear. They look as good as the day they were knit. And I really appreciate that in, in any sweater. That it doesn't pill too much. I think it is almost the softer the yarn, the more it pills, unfortunately. But this would be one of my top ones. And it took a while to knit. And there was a needle saga and a yarn saga. But eventually we got there and there's just beautiful detail on it. And it's a very, very wearable knit. It's lovely casually, but it also dresses up really nicely. And again, I didn't do a button band. <laughs> didn't want buttonholes. So I sewed on this clip. So that is the Kate Cardigan by Libby Johnson. Sweater-wise... Uh... There has to be the Kate or the Felix. The Felix is a recent knit, but it is certainly one of my favourite patterns of all time. As you can see, I'm wearing my Kate cardigan. Keep calling it Kate. My Felix cardigan, and this is the Felix sweater, and I love this. 
and I love the yarns that I've used for both these. Both of them are from Adele McBride. This was her uh, Aran Sleeve League colorway and it had been produced for her by Studio Donegal and this is Momer which is a merino mohair mix and both of them are wearing really well. They haven't, I haven't had them long but they're certainly when you wear them for prolonged length of time there's no pilling and the stitch definition I think for both of them is really nice I just this is probably one of my top um, patterns for, for sweaters it is just so easy but so effective and there probably will be another Felix sometime in the future so Felix is certainly up there it's a cropped although I knit cropped slightly longer than the patterns ever recommend but it is a cropped uh, cardigan and um, you can't see the bottom and sweater so that's the felix by amy christoffers uh created both of those i love kate davies patterns i've loved all all Kate Davies produces. I've knit a couple. I knit the Braid Hills cardigan. Okay, and there's a bit of cabling. I love cables. Cables would be my favourite design feature over lace. And this is where I got the idea of the, the tape, the poppers, and then putting on a fancy button on the outside. So I'd knit this, but my favourite Kate Davies is this one. This was the first colour work sweater I ever knit. And it's Miss, Ra Miss Rachel's Yoke. And I knit this for the first Edinburgh Yarn Festival that I went to, which was in 2017. And the funny story behind this is that I was so excited about it. I was thrilled with how this turned out. Particularly for a first time project I was so excited because Kate Davies was there and my friends were actually quite concerned that I was going to pass out because I got so excited I almost started to hyperventilate she's my knitting hero I think her work is stunning and yeah I, I just was so excited to meet her to the point I was faint I went up to speak to her she very kindly was letting people have a chat and get their photograph taken and I happened to mention that this was my first colour work sweater and her response was yes. Now, I wasn't sure how to take that was that yes it's your first colour work sweater or yes that's obvious that this is your first colour work sweater. I didn't care I was just thrilled I was wearing it and I was standing beside her but it did create a bit of a giggle with everybody when her response was yes. I love it. It's knit in her Buchel yarn, which is a DK. Both projects were knit in Buchel. It's 100% wool, Scottish um, wool. And I love this. I just think it is so stylish on. And again, it has a little bit of pilling, but it's very, very little. And this was, this was knit in 2017. And I don't think I've ever had to shave this one. I've had to shave a few sweaters. So I love this. This is definitely one of my top, top, top sweaters that gets a lot of wear. Other sweaters that I, I love them all. Um, this was another Studio Donegal sweater. This was from the Donegal Wool um, what do they call the company? It is the Donegal Spinning Company, which I think is part of Studio Donegal. And this was the Nuke by Jonah Hitala. And it was in the very first line of magazine. Again, it's a little vest or short sleeved top. And the colourway was turquoise. And just like all Studio Donegal yarns or Donegal yarns. It shows no wear. So that's the Nuke t-shirt and whatever. 
one yarn that hasn't held up and I've talked about this before and I love this yarn and I ended up knitting a shawl in it which was perfect for it. This was my artichoke French that I knit for my first Rhinebeck in 2017. And I love this pattern. It's in the Rhinebeck sweater book uh, that is a collection of patterns based on the Rhinebeck uh, New York Sheep and Wool Festival. And this pattern was by Lauren Elkin. And I knit this in John Arbin Knit by Numbers, the DK. And it's a beautiful, beautiful yarn. I want to stress that this is a beautiful yarn. It's 100% merino. It's very soft. But I have found that because it's 100% merino, it pills and it pilled basically on the first wear. And this has to regularly get shaved. I have knit a shawl in it and knit a shawl recently, the, was it the Charmin shawl? And it's beautiful. It worked really well with it. Um, but it didn't really work for this sweater. I have used John Arbin Harvest Hues and this little sweater, The Breakwater by Cecily Glowick MacDonald and it hasn't pulled. It is the Falkland and Swartbles. I'm sorry, I'm having to look at my notes. And this again is John Arbin and it is such a different uh, yarn to the the merino it wears a lot lot better so i do love this yarn but not for a sweater this one is more sweater worth so that is quite a selection uh one final one to talk about is mm, this one. This is the Parisian Dreams, I think it's Parisian Dreams sweater by Mina Phillip, who is the knitting expat. And this was knit in Willy Mammoth Fibres, BFL Masham 4 ply. And there's beautiful stitch definition in this sweater. It's a bit soft. There's a little bit of pilliness to it, but not very much. There's beautiful, beautiful stitch definition. I love this sweater. I have a few Woolly Mammoth fibre sweaters. This one is a recent knit. It is the Rachel sweater by Jose Paquin. And I love all um, my Woolly Mammoth fibre. This is a Teeswater Oxford Down. It was a limited edition. Bit more um, tooth to it than the, the BFL Masson. So there's a range. Lopi is wonderful. This is a... a sweater that is going to get a little bit of doctoring I'm going to actually rip out the yoke because I used a Donegal yarn which is beautiful but it's a completely different feel than the lopey and it has left the neck very wide and I have this lopey to do the neck again it's a duchess sweater by Cheryl Burke which is another Rhinebeck sweater um, pattern but the lope is very very hard wearing it's very warm it is quite um, I think it would be quite itchy next to skin I would never it's a big winter sweater so I would never wear it without a long sleeve top underneath it so that is a very quick tour of uh, my sweaters you've seen some of my favorites I love them all as I said but I have some that definitely get worn more often than others. What I will do is I will take a photograph of all of these and if you wish, I will put them on 
if you want to see them, I will have them on at the end with the name of the pattern on it. And then you can look in the description box below to see the link to the patterns and all of the ones that I've discussed will be there as well. I hope you have enjoyed this little look through the sweaters and I hope to see you again very soon.